even though the CGI is somewhat dated, their performances, their reactions sell it so well. A couple of the music, just right. seeing that's like, I'll show you. Yeah. It's just like, I believe it. He yeah. made dinosaurs. Yeah, fucking Colonel Sanders is right. Yeah. Like, I, I want to. Oh, that's right. Colonel Walt Disney got it right. Yes. I want to do it. I want to explain myself mm. because a lot of people are like, man, that is absolute bullshit that you have not seen this movie. It's yeah. absolute bullshit. It and I'm like, oh, I mean, the, the fact that it I haven't is, but the truth that I haven't seen it no is otters. very real. Yes. Is, is what? <laughs> There's no otters in it. <laughs> yeah. There's no otters in this movie. <laughs> and I can't watch it. I didn't want it. I know. I want, never mind. Uh, that's a callback. Anyway, and so... <laughs> The truth of the matter is, I've probably seen this once. Mm -hmm. I probably saw it at my uncle's house because he let us watch movies that we weren't allowed to watch because right. it was all uh, my cousins and stuff. I talked about it before on the show. I probably saw it when I was real little right. because we never owned this DVD. We never owned this VHS. And I don't remember seeing it in, in the theaters. theaters. And I might have been too small. It's three right. years old. So mm -hmm. you know, you're know, you not going to take a three-year-old to go see Jurassic Park, no, at no. least a responsible one. It's horrifying. And so not <laughs> having it, yeah. And, and there's no otters in it, of course. Yeah, right? exactly. And I wasn't going to go in the theater. <laughs> yeah. no. But not having it, and whenever I saw it on TV, mm -hmm. it was always in the middle. It was it was never at the beginning. I've never sure. once caught this in the beginning. So yeah. it was never a point where I was like, well, I'm just going to start watching this and figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. This was never a movie I felt like I could do that with. And and so didn't watch it in that regard. And then it got to the point where I was like, you know what? This is the truth. I know I, I hadn't watched a lot of these movies. At yeah. a certain point, I was, I was self-aware that Sammy ain't seen shit. Yeah. And I didn't have the idea of the excellence in mind. I didn't have the idea of Double Toasted in mind. Double Toasted wasn't even a thing. Spill was a thing. Yeah. And I was like, I kind of want to do movie reviews. I've mm -hmm. always wanted to do what I'm doing now. Sure, of course. Follow your dreams, kids. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, it got to the point where I was like, you know what? Maybe if I just actively avoid it, then maybe one day I'll be able to do it. Mm -hmm. And today is that day. Yeah. Which is really exciting for me because I've been wanting to watch Jurassic Park. Who doesn't want to watch and be a part of that that whole idea, that part of America, for Christ's yeah, sake? It's part of the cultural zeitgeist. Zeitgeist is the perfect word and is yeah. the correct word. <laughs> I need to say this before we move on ahead when we're talking about the protagonist. Because yes. I've seen Jurassic World. And, and I got to tell you, man, I... I get Chris Pratt is charming. I understand that he was funny. I was at Park and Rec's Park and Rec's yeah. show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I understand that he was funny on that. Mm -hmm. I get that people like Star Lord and like he's super charming. You mm -hmm. like Star Lord? Yeah, I do. Everyone likes Star Lord. Why wouldn't you like him other than after Infinity War? He's fucking up. But <laughs> but he's just never been my cup of tea. And I and I'm not saying that I hate him. I'm not saying that he's necessarily right. bad in anything. Uh -huh. But when I was watching Jurassic World, I was like, okay. We got this guy who's already immediately sexing up this dino specialist, the one girl in this movie. We have – he's a sexy raptor trainer. He knows exactly – he's totally which, in control. Which is so like – are you kidding me? Yeah. The most dangerous dinosaur in all the past movies, you're going to make it a dog in this in, in this film? Right. Taking away the threat? Exactly. Right, and and I don't really remember too much of that film in general sure. because it's not – that rem uh, rememberable? Uh, that's it's right not word. that memorable. memorable. There you go. Rememberable. Wow. You got it. I was helping you out. You I'm got a it linguist. Yeah. And so it's not that memorable, but it made all the money in the world. Sure. It, it's, it's top 10 movie all time worldwide. Mm -hmm. And once Disney starts so it keeps making movies, yeah. that'll be bumped out. And that's the that's the only one in the top 10 worldwide that is not Disney. Right. So, so Jurassic mm -hmm. World was a big deal, but I'm watching it. I'm like, I don't like I, I realized why after watching this, I didn't like it. And that was why I didn't like it. it. Was because Chris Pratt was just so charming and he was so so perfect. And then the, and then yeah. what was the character was Jessica Chastain? She the redhead uh, in the movie? No, Howard's daughter. Um, Ron Howard's the, the, daughter. Da, Brad, Brad, Bryce Dallas Howard. Bryce Dallas Howard. There we go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she was good. I guess I don't know. She I, was, I she was running in heels. It's, and that it's was cool. a thankless role that yeah. she has. And I actually on your point about Chris Pratt, he's charming on autopilot, and that's why he doesn't work because he's just going through the motions. Yeah, he does, yeah. His whole his expressions. Yeah, it's like, that's oh, it. I'm cute. I'm adorable. That, that's I'm a big, it. That's adorable man. And yep. here is what mm -hmm. I'm talking about. We're talking about this movie. We're not talking about that movie. We're not going to do that many comparisons, but I had to make that point here. No, because no. here, mm -hmm. we have Sam Neill as a doctor. Now, I don't know Sam Neill like that. You said Sam Neill is the guy from the guy Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Park. That's, that's his best role. <laughs> and so what I see here is what I get. Yeah. 
And what I get is immediately is a very smart man yes. who's a very boring dude that doesn't know how to relate to children. Uh-huh. And it's, it's kind of exactly what I want in an adventure like this. Mm-hmm. He doesn't bother to bite your jugular like a lion, say. No, no. He slashes at you here or maybe across the belly, spilling your intestines. The point is, you are alive when they start to eat you. So, you know, try to show a little respect. Okay. That's right, duck face. You show respect. <laughs> you know who that is? Oh, you know no. who that little kid is? He's a weird looking little kid. He's fucking but... duck face from Full House. I don't know why I remember that. All right. But That's I remember on you. that You shit. saw that. I did uh, not see that. I was going to say, I was probably watching Full House instead of Jurassic Park. Apparently. It's probably true. Don't but miss, that's the thing. I was going to say, don't you miss films where they used to threaten kids like that? Well, that's the thing. So well, charming. That's, that's something that I'll bring up. Well, one, yeah. Sam Neill is a freaky dude. He is. He's not, I mean, like, look, we get he's smart. He's like, he's a regular guy eventually. And he, you know, he, he finds, you know, falls in love with the kids and he's like, yeah, hey, I'm going to be a father sure, one day sure. too. Mm-hmm. That's his arc. But in the beginning, He's not charming. No, he's he's, not. he's he's just an angry guy, an angry archaeologist, mm. and he freaks out kids. And and it's I know it's gonna stoke the Sammy hates kids narrative that's on this no. channel. But fine, sure, whatever. But this is a guy I can get behind because oh, yeah. the thing is, is that not only is he very real, he's kind of anti-technology in this realm of real grit and archaeology, computers, and that, and that makes him that makes him more rugged in this sense. Yeah, and that little kind of story there just makes you go, like, you know what? This is not like a Stallone or Schwarzenegger type of tough no, guy, not at all. but he is in his own right a little off, kind of charismatic, but not really. It's more so of just like confident in the sense that he can go up to a kid, pretend to slash him, and everyone thinks he's cool. Mm-hmm. Like everyone's like, "Oh, ha ha, you tricked that kid!" Yeah. Now that kid will respect dinosaurs. When that's a fucked up thing to do. That kid had it coming though. He was he was a smart. Well, that kid's a little, yeah, that kid. he's a little shit. Yeah, yeah. but everyone else agreed with him to yeah, fuck with that exactly, kid like that. Yeah. And that's, it takes that kind of command. Mm-hmm. And it made him real. Yes. And you need a real character when you're running around a fucking park full of dinosaurs. Right. And and that was the biggest thing for me. Like, Chris Pratt never seemed real to me. He no. seemed like an act. He seemed like Chris Pratt. Which, also, one other thing that's very dumb, mm-hmm. um, people think that this is Chris Pratt's character. Some really? people think, yeah, some people, there's a, there was a fan theory, at least initially. Oh, well, it's a fan theory. Yeah, because fans are crazy, and they want everything to connect because Star Wars made that thing. Exactly. So right. you have Sam Neill playing right. that, that anchor. He's anchor, the anchor for man. everything, and, yeah. then, and partially Laura Dern, too, because she adds another sure. element to the science, which is uh, more... Uh, paleo- less, bo- she's a paleobotanist. She botanist. does ancient plants. She, plants, and, and then she motherly aspects and stuff like that, and then women's... Power, because there's even a reference to uh, what was it when the shit's going down, and he's like, "I'm a man, I should go." And she's like, "We could talk about being sexist later." Yeah, and then yeah. she goes and be a strong woman, mm-hmm. and it's cool. I like that little hint in there. And so these characters are all very real, very representative of early '90s kind of just yeah. culture and what the, and what it was. At Their the time. characters are grounded. Those two, right? After a nice twenty minute wait in this film, all those all these <laughs> things happen. Really, it kind of clips through. It doesn't really feel like twenty minutes. We finally get what we want, and. We get that big reveal. You mm. cried. Yeah, I did. And you know what? I have to admit, even though I was watching it on a small screen, I was watching it on a laptop screen. Okay. It Honestly, it really is as remarkable as what people said it was. Welcome to Jurassic Park. How'd you do that? Like, are you okay? No, no. The thing is, but <laughs> even though the CGI is somewhat dated, their performances, their reactions sell it so well. A couple of the music, just right. thing that's like, I'll show you. Yeah, it's just like I believe it. He yeah. made dinosaurs. Yeah, <laughs> fucking Colonel Sanders is right. Yeah, like, I, I want to. Oh, that's right. Colonel Walt Disney <laughs> got it right. Yes. I want to do it. But mm-hmm. honestly, you thought that the the shot of them on the lake was the thing that got you. Mm-hmm. That got you. Yeah. Oh, that, did that get you, folks? As that was the, the, as a kid. Yeah. That didn't. As much as the one by itself, honestly. Okay. To me, see that. Uh, there's one thing that it's it's so hard for me to explain that I really appreciate in films, mm-hmm. and that's the pro- a proper representation of scale. I like knowing right. how big I am in relation to other things. Mm-hmm. One movie that's fantastic at it, District Nine. 
District Nine, as simple as it is, having that sure. little that the spaceship hover over South Africa like that, right, right, having helicopters flying in the city, it, yeah, Johannesburg, right. That to me is like, oh, I understand how big that is. Mm-hmm. When you watch Godzilla, you don't know how big Godzilla is. He's just yeah. kind of going through buildings, and you, it's a model city. It's, it's, it's a model city. Yeah. You don't know you when you watch uh, any monster movie. Really, it's just like okay, a lot of them. Yeah. It's all fake. It's mm-hmm. all fake. Cloverfield. It's like oh yeah, it's ground level. And it's kind of real sometimes, but you don't get it. Sure. This movie being goddamn 25 years old, this scene right here, this part, this moment right here where the camera's looking up, yeah, everyone's like looking up at it, and there's even like a little bit of a haze that mm-hmm. is like a natural, just atmospheric haze the that sun a cloudy everything. city has, or right, cloudy right. city, a cloudy just environment has, okay. this little misty yeah. environment has. It's selling it, man. And so when you get scenes like this, and then you start getting into the meat of what this park is. Mm-hmm. That's when my ears started to get perked because, as we talked about last week with the Incredibles, I love Disney and love right. Disneyland. I've been um, almost maybe almost ten times since I've been alive. Wow! Yeah, I, Disneyland is a place I've been to for three, four. Yeah, I want to say close to ten times in my whole life. Ten times more than I've been there. <laughs> you need to go. It's it's I fantastic. Mm-hmm. I, I want to go again, but I'm going to Anaheim tomorrow. But there you go. Yeah. I won't have a chance oh, to. Sorry, but. We talked about how I'm a huge Disney fan, mm-hmm. and particularly of Disneyland. Sure. So when they started getting to the park elements of the film, I was like, all right, this is starting to get interesting, because I didn't know they were going to go there with this movie. Okay. I thought dinosaur fights and anger and shooting guns and stuff. <laughs> I didn't know that there was going to be like actual substance, a little more substance mm-hmm. than getting to just regular violence. So talking about different elements of the logistics, the experiences that they're trying to convey with people, right. the exhibits and whatnot, that was probably my like a small favorite part of Jurassic World, where they had all the exhibits, mm-hmm. particularly the element of them being sponsored by things. It was like Verizon's Dinosaur Park and, right. and Samsung's uh, you know Raptor Adventure Quest. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, that's what I like about that movie mm-hmm. and those little elements here, not necessarily of the advertising, but of the... This is the experience we're going to sell these people. This is the park element sure. of it. This is the behind the curtain stuff. This is the stuff I wanted to see. And mm-hmm. so what took it to the next level for me was the animated cartoon explaining dinosaur <laughs> DNA because if Felix right. laughs, we all know. Like for the kids. It's yeah. for the children. Yeah. But that's the thing. It served as both an example of what the Jurassic Park experience is, right. but as also an information dump for the movie. This fossilized tree sap, which we call amber, Waited for millions of years with the mosquito inside. Bingo. Dino DNA. We use the complete DNA of a frog to fill in the holes and complete the code. And that's it. Like, it's stupid. It's silly. It's a cartoon. And as as it is. But... When you're really kind of looking at the context of what's this park trying to do? Right. This is like this is like Star Tours for me. Star mm-hmm. Tours, the the video projection, you're in the seat and it's moving around. That's what this is. That's yeah. that that's this ride. So I'm like, okay, you're gonna have that. And then you have the explanation. So now you kind of understand where these dinosaurs come from. And then you go on the ride. Then you go on the rail car where you get to see the dinosaurs. Sure. Then you get to do this thing. And you get to see the bones. And you get to see the gift shop. And I'm, it's already <laughs> building the experience for me. And I'm like, this is awesome. Mm-hmm. This is as silly and as simple as it is. It's a creative way to kind of add that element of this being a real park as well as telling us how the fuck they did this in as basic of a simple way as they could. Like, nope. it, it, in the way they showed it even more so, it, the animation's like a schoolhouse rock. Exactly. And, and, and the, yeah. the way it's presented is like a Bill Nye the Science Guy. It's mm-hmm. very indicative of a of 90s children's science show. It has that kind of aesthetic, you know. And so it's that part that gets you introduced to the science element and it warms you up to the more advanced science stuff as they go on immediately. And for what it's worth... Does it make sense in real science? And I don't know. I'm not matter. a real scientist. <laughs> I don't need to be a real scientist. Frog DNA. That's all you need to know. That's fine. Yeah, <laughs> Dino DNA. That's yeah. all you need to know. And so, so they're selling it. And and so with a movie like this, that's all you need. So when they start talking about dinosaur eggs, or I'm sorry, dinosaur eggs, you gotta <laughs> that's right. and all the you know the fail safes they put in there, you're able to fully grasp the wonder of all this, albeit fictional, scientific wonder. Yep. Come on. Come on. For the birth of every little creature on this island. You're implying that a group composed entirely of female animals will breed? No, I'm I'm simply saying that life uh, finds a way. Spooky Jeff Goldblum. It's the pauses that do it. It's that, uh, but he sells it, though. 
Yeah, he's he's the voice of reason. All these people are all flummoxed by all these dinosaurs. Yeah, he says all these quotes that everyone loves quoting afterwards. <laughs> That's no, right. Yeah. But the, and the, here's the thing with that scene though, in particular, mm-hmm. because you're looking at this little baby dinosaur, it's, and it's wonderful. It's like, man, this is this is really cool. It's also horrifying. It's all it's it's kind of horrifying <laughs> it's and creepy looking. And the anyway. puppet itself is yeah, it's mixed. You can, yeah, you yeah. can go whether you're not or whatever. It's not blinking or whatever. Mm-hmm. But these movies, movies like this, are so ingrained in the culture of America that. It's the, it's just the fact that they tend to influence a lot of other things in movies sure. and TV and other creators and more importantly in this scene um, warrant parodies because when I was watching this scene I don't know if you know what I'm thinking no but <laughs> we'll see though I was watching this scene and it was great don't get me wrong mm-hmm. but I immediately my mind went immediately to this scene here ladies and gentlemen the first T Rex that the world has seen in four million years is happening in my home this is the most baller shit ever. <laughs> So if you don't know the sketch, that is uh, that is Dave Chappelle, a Chappelle show. Yeah. That was one of the lost episodes. Oh, where, where okay. <laughs> this was the season three that didn't get aired. Yeah. That wasn't supposed to be aired because he quit. Yeah. Because he thought the sketches were too much in certain ways. Some of them were. <laughs> oh, yeah, he thought one. some of them were too racist. Oh, okay. That was the Cribs episode where he was talking about how he makes everything the most baller, right? Sure. And so he was cracking and making dinosaur egg omelets. <laughs> that hatched, and he chopped off the head with the scissors. That shit. As soon as that little baby hatched, yeah. I was like, I wish I just had my scissors and then just cut that shit off. And the same reaction you had was yeah. the same reaction I had when I was a kid. I was like, oh my god, yeah. I'm 14, 15, watching him chop off this baby dinosaur's mm-hmm. head, and it's grossly inappropriate. For that scene, because it was so filled with majesty and wonder, and it was sure. supposed to be played as cute. But I just thought about grabbing scissors and chopping it up and putting it in an omelet. And, and that's that was kind of the problem with this movie, is that things kept seeping in a little bit. Oh, the just, pop culture Just a little stuff. pop culture reference mm-hmm. kept seeping in. Like, Newman was Newman. Newman is never not Newman to me. He was Newman in that movie, this. though, too. Even, <laughs> even more so. People were like, oh, it's Newman. And so, it was just kind of... And, and Laura Dern was space space general for me. because I lady. I didn't really see her all that much. So. But... The cars on the rail won't come back. The radios are gone. The, right. the phones are gone. Everything's fucked up. So you wouldn't know that that's when shit starts going off the rails for real. Because now we can get to the fun stuff with mm-hmm. this show. Because I've seen the T-Rex in the clips over the years. I've seen the, the water droplets. I've, I've seen it all. Right. But I've not seen it all together. You know, I've, I've been to Universal Studios California where you go on the Jurassic Park ride. Sure. Do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, I'm talking about. So, yeah, if you don't know the Jurassic Park ride, you're going around. You go through a real soft, watery part. Jurassic Park, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the dinosaurs squirt water at Water-sources. you. Dinosaurs, so, yeah, yeah. So cute. Mm-hmm. And then you go up a big old giant hill or That's down. Right. I forget what you do. And then you go forward, 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 forward. And then a big T-Rex head comes at your boat and then you just drop. Right. And it's legitimately terrifying sure. it's it's a it's a nice thrill mm-hmm. and so even knowing that that the dinosaur in your face the movie probably does that mm-hmm. it's terrifying i know that feeling it's great but watching it all together on the scene with the proper cinematography with the ro- proper building with the proper music with the proper sound mm-hmm. editing it's awesome That guy's fucking dead. Died like, the sa- super dead. Yeah, died the same way Elvis did on the toilet eaten by a T-Rex. No, I forgot that second part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I forgot yeah. that second people, part. People always forget that part. Yeah. But, but what I love about that scene in particular is that it's very much like Jaws, how it starts out, where we see the goat. Goat's fine. And then we see the scene again. Goat's not there. It's always it's building up continuously. Then next time we see the goat, we see like its leg, and it lands in the car. And then we see the T-Rex in the background, its little um, uh, hand just kind of on the wire or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then you see its face, and you see it in full glory coming out of its enclosure. And, it, and it's just amazing. It's it's setting up the tension, ratcheting up each time until when you finally get that reaction when the kids are fucking up. Right. And then it's chasing it's like after Trump them. Light, Trump light, Trump light, Trump yeah, exactly. light. And everyone's like, yeah, Trump light, God it's, damn it. It's just great filmmaking. <laughs> and that's that's the CGI that holds it the best because it's also filmed in the dark. Right. Which is really good. So and, no, that entire sequence is amazing. And that's the thing. Now, people with me in this show, mm-hmm. they go, Sam, you're awfully nitpicky when it comes to special effects, especially old special effects. Um, for me, it's it's... It's a mix. Sometimes I can go with bad special effects, 
and sometimes I can't. Perfect right. example. Um, you've seen Bl- um, Dark Man. Yeah, I've seen that. The Sam Raimi film. Yeah. He's hanging from the helicopter. Yeah. It's on purpose supposed to be bad blue screen in the background. Sloppy superhero hanging. film. Yeah, sloppy. Mm-hmm. I hated it. Ian loved it. Yeah. I understood what they were going for. Right. But I didn't like it. Mm-hmm. And there's other instances where they it's bad or it's just as bad as something like that. But it's the best that they have available at the time. Yeah. And so I can go with it there. Like Dune. Like some most some of the stuff in Dune, I'm like, okay, it's bad, but I go with it. <laughs> sure. uh, same thing like Flash Gordon. That's a mixture of both being bad and there. Can't Especially be. Flash Gordon. I can go with it, right? Mm-hmm. Here, there's no way you can't go with it. There's absolutely no way you can't go with it right. because you're too busy. Like you said, it's it's not even a matter of whether it looks good or not. It's a matter of did they set up terror exactly. properly? Yep. And they do. Mm-hmm. And they do every time. And so like I'm watching this scene in particular and there's no seams to this whole thing. The computer generated images, mm-hmm. the puppet, they go back and forth without missing a beat. And it makes you feel like these things are alive. And it is legitimately terrifying. And it's also putting the kids in real danger. Like yeah. those kids could die. Like I, I'm gonna, <laughs> I, I left a little section of the clip in there. But uh, who's the little girl? What's her name? Lex. Lex. Um, she is Lex and as Tim. A, well, the, the little girl actor. Mm-hmm. She's acting her ass off because oh, she's yeah. fucking shrieking like we are <laughs> like Sell I'm it. gonna. Fucking die! Earn your paycheck. <laughs> and that's the th- and she's doing that the whole movie, but like in this moment in particular, she is fucking wrecked. Yeah, it's great. And 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 it does and that's another thing to your point that I was going to bring up. Uh, mm-hmm. My brother introduced this concept to me that movies no longer put their children in peril. Right. Like not necessarily be kill them or be violent with them. Fuck them up. They but, don't fuck but up just, the kids. Just rattle them. You yeah, know, like yeah. put like I said, put them in peril. Like make sure they're getting crushed by a dinosaur. Exactly. And you don't know whether they're going to die or not. And there's another one in this movie. Totally caught me off guard. Oh my god. Great movie. I was like, holy shit. Man. And then. The movie goes, okay, you deal with the kids, he's yeah. becoming a father figure, and everyone's mad at each other, eating ice cream, everything's <laughs> trying to figure right. everything out, trying to reset the, the mainframe. Mm-hmm. Then it's a long pause. Then there. it gets crazy. Yeah. Then it gets to my part where I was like, oh shit. It's about to go down mm-hmm. because the park is lost. Everything's going downhill. Yeah. And I am at a point where I'm like, okay, this is, you know, the kids are. Taking too long. Okay, now they learned how to to breed, and now the dinosaurs are making dinosaurs. Yeah, exactly. Everything's lo- mm-hmm. everything's out of control. But then we realize the Velociraptors have escaped. Yeah, and that's when <laughs> everything ones. that's when everything goes shit. And this whole sequence is something out of a horror film. Yep. Now the, they had a horror element with the dinosaur, the T Rex, mm-hmm. with the with the, the leg, and then like you said, the slow builds up, they right. kind of shrouded in the glass, and then behind the cage, it's their giant monster. Basically, you have your giant monster. You have your King Kong, essentially. Yes, revealed in the same way. What do you have behind there, King Kong? We get it, Jeff Goldblum, foreshadowing. But then <laughs> you have this whole sequence. Now I can't really even say anything about it because I want to talk and I want to say what I want to say about the scene mm-hmm. after the fact. So let's just watch it. Because we are being hunted. I've got her. No, no! I have to jump. Oh! <laughs> now I'm watching this, by the way. I'm going to stop right there just for a second. Mm-hmm. I'm watching this, and I'm like, okay, he's going to let go at the last moment. No. Three, two, and then he gets zapped. Yep. He starts flying. I was like, I literally was like, oh, shit. And I put my hands on my head. I go, that kid's fucking dead. Yeah, 10,000 volts. That, that would, He would be, uh, like, fried. Yeah, no, <laughs> because be I've... I've I found on the dark parts of the internet people touching electrical lines. Oh yeah, it goes, boom! It white white mm-hmm. ex- like white explosion. Yep, and then fall. Yep, or if they're wearing a harness, just drop mm-hmm. and then they hang. If there's anything at all, yeah, like, exactly. Because ten thousand ten thousand volts. Ten thousand volts. Ten thousand yeah. volts. The dinosaurs would fucking disintegrate yeah. if they hit that shit. <laughs> like much, how the yeah. Velociraptors hitting this shit without exploding on impact. Mm-hmm. But beside the point. That kid should have fucking died. No, he should I, I don't even care if it's like an opening charge. Yeah. Even half of that would have exploded him. I mean, he's kind of fucked up for the rest of the film, though. But not, not enough to not, to not walk slipping. around. That, that took off like some of his nervous system there. His leg doesn't work anymore. It <laughs> fucked him up a little bit. We see him hobbling a lot. Uh, Hobbling's like... one thing because he, dr- he fell 10 feet. <laughs> he did, yeah. But he also should have just <laughs> fucking died. Should have. So I said, oh, shit, to that. Yeah, right. Then the movie kept going. I think we're back in business. Oh shit! <laughs> and that's what I faced when I saw that too. I know I keep pausing, but like, I was like, okay, they exploded that kid. That mm-hmm. was the cost of this whole scene. Sure. And then she's like, I did it, I did it, and it popped out. I was like, again, yeah. oh, like those, these were the words I was saying. Oh shit! 
And then she's over there terrified. She's fighting, doing selling all this it. stuff, mm-hmm. selling the shit out of it. And then it keeps going. Oh, Mr. Arnold. Love oh, that. shit. <laughs> Love that dark meat. Clever girl. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Good. That's I, I put that in because that's bullshit. No. That kid should have fucking. No, I should have, but and she should and she should have been weeping, and then she would have mm-hmm. been scarred for life, and then she would have been institutionalized. And that's what I want. I want that gritty, realistic. Where is she in the new series? Huh? How come she's not testimonial against all this shit? <laughs> she is. They, they're both in the Lost World. Yeah, really? Actually, yeah, there's a cam- they have a cameo appearance. <sighs> so. Why aren't they in? The new world. What is it called? Jurassic World. Jurassic World. I mean, yeah, might bad. as well. You're bringing everyone back like, at this like, point. You got somebody, Jeff Goldblum. Why, they're not dead. Like, mm-hmm. if they go, yeah, we're releasing Jurassic World. It's like, that's a you, fucking bad idea. You, you should you know be on why? the forefront. You know why? Because they're getting all the royalties from the, the theme park. Because, you know, oh, eventually oh, made the it, suit. and they're related to him. They're not going to, you know, hey, this is our paycheck right here. We don't have to work for forever. Fuck it. Yeah, no, it was a great experience. Well, don't have to deal with yeah, that anymore. Man, they could afford therapy, I guess. <laughs> yeah, because that's yeah, like exactly. fucking getting almost murdered by dinosaurs, almost losing your little brother. That's a fucked up situation to be in. He's fine. Really? <laughs> a big enough paycheck, you'll be fine. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I'm all fucked up, but well, don't, okay. don't test that theory. I just hope you never test that theory. But yes. Anyway. yes. It's that time again. YouTube comment time? It's YouTube comment time. You Yay, got it right. I got it. Thank Yay. you. It only took you three weeks or four weeks. I don't know how long you've been here. Three weeks? Whatever. Yeah, three Welcome, weeks. everybody. Listening out there on YouTube, welcome to the YouTube comment section. Mm. Before we get to it, leave your comments down below. Hit the like button. Hit it again. Hit it a third time. That's a triple like. Do it. Thank you. And also be sure to go to DTMerch.com. Oh, I forgot to put up my hand. DTMerch.com. <laughs> go ahead and put it right there. It's not there when it's live. It's not there when I do it uh, pre-recorded. But it is it's there fine. on YouTube for you, you out it. there. One more thing. Mm. Go to Chicago. PartyDT.com. Get your ticket to Chicago. Happening next week. Well, actually, yeah, no. We're putting it up yeah, on no, time. No, yeah. I'm putting it up yeah. on time this week. Chicago. Next week, Saturday, we're going to have a whole big event. $35. PartyDT.com. Get yourself some tickets and come see us. It's going to be a wonderful time. It's going to be a great time, Chris. Yeah, I'm not going to be there, though. It's going to be an even better time, Chris. And so... <laughs> good for you guys. Yeah. With, with all that together, mm. thank you for watching this week's episode, which was this week's episode. Jurassic Park. And thank you for watching last week's episode, which these comments are about, which was... The Incredibles. I was going to give you a second. <laughs> so thank you for those comments. And we're going to read those Incredibles comments right now, starting with TJ Hasty. I'm pretty sure the jumper Mr. Incredible stops was my introduction to the concept of suicide. Hmm. I feel like I already knew about suicide, <laughs> but for a lot of kids, that probably was their first moment. We're probably like, like why was that this? guy jumping from the building? Yeah. And it's like, he didn't want to live anymore. Life sucks in mm-hmm. superhero world. The economy's but, awful. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Pixar's introducing a lot of adult themes in all the films, so I can understand why that was the first time for a lot of kids. And now sense. you have Coco to sort through those feelings. It's yeah. like, yeah, you die, and then you yeah. die again. So That's you get right. to do it twice, the, kids. The it's going to be great. Religion. Next one, though. Yeah. Uh, the Stegman. Oh, Sammy. I'll wait for the other review. Oh, my God. Um, what other review? <laughs> my other review? I'm on all of the old reviews. Mm-hmm. I, my, here's my thing. I'm gonna, there's more criticisms on this review below. I think people thought that the Incredibles review was going to be Corey and Martin. Oh, uh, okay. But here's the thing I wonder. Yeah. What has that ever been the case? I, I've had Martin on partially last week, at the end mm-hmm. of the last week's show, which nice is surprise. a great little surprise guest starring. But anytime it's an old movie, it's us. It's, it's no, more importantly, not more. I'm sorry. That was the wrong way to say. <laughs> more consistently, it's me. Go. I mean, mm-hmm. there was Ian and you. I'm yes. sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm not here to I'll belittle your be. thoughts. No, no, I get it. It's fine. But <laughs> it's usually my face. And so... I don't know where they're getting this idea. They're going to like watch Jurassic yeah. World, this this tape, what, tape, wow. Yeah. This review we're doing right now, and they're going to be like, why is Sammy here? It's because it's the show I do, guys. Mm-hmm. I can't help you with that. And you're welcome to not watch, but just yeah. for future reference, if you're still watching it, somehow I'm, I'm going to be doing all the old movies. Regular teller. How the heck can you like A Bug's Life more than Incredibles? Then again, I like Ratatouille a lot, so I can understand underrated Pixar. Because you're a bug I boy. I didn't. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I love the goddamn Shut bugs. Shut the fuck up. It's like dinosaurs, whatever. Bugs and otters. That's what he's into, Go apparently. watch the full review for that joke. But no, I actually I just want to refute that. I did not think that A Bug's Life was better than Incredibles. I didn't think that either. Where did people get that? No, no, because I said that yeah. I had watched it and had preferred the Bug's Life movies because I had seen them more. 
Okay. Over that because and and I wouldn't even say that I've seen a Bug's Life more. Right. But what I what I was describing was that I had seen Bug's Life sure. and had a little bit more of a vivid memory of it because I was a little kid mm-hmm. and it was a part of that Disney uh, yeah. it was a little the afterglow of Toy Story, which was a huge movie oh, for me. Absolutely. Sure. So so the Incredibles didn't catch me because I was fourteen. But and I in no way saying that a Bug's Life is better than The Incredibles. Right. Then again, I haven't seen it in a good amount of time, and we will probably do uh, Bugs Life on this show at some point. Oh, sure. So, um, Base Madara Huchiha. That's hard to say. Mm. This is the most overrated movie of all time, and I hate it. Bugs Life and Nut Job are superior Ooh. films by far. Bugs Life, like I said, I remembered enough to have a comment on that. Nut Job, I have not seen it. Feeling some at an audible ooh. It's not it's it's not good. Yeah. So, uh, nut job is that is who who is the Will Arnett is the main guy in there? He voices is the he the nut job? I don't know. I, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't seen it, but <sighs> trolls, tell us man. why. Tell us why those two. Tell films us more are in the comments. Than... Leave your comments down below. <laughs> like and subscribe. Do all those things. And last but not least, overlookers, overlookers. The government paid off Mr. Incredible's lawsuit because they own him. The Incredibles takes place in an alternate universe where the Manhattan Project was superheroes. The government eugenically created superhumans to win World War II and then employed them to eliminate terrorist threats. The supervillains don't have superpowers. They're themed terrorists with specialized technology and firearms. That's awesome. Is that a theory? Is that true? I don't know, but I wish it was true. It fits in. It does. That's the, like the, the dark version in. of Pixar. I mean, yeah, it totally does. Yeah, I mean, didn't you say that Jack Jack... Uh, not spoilers, but this was uh, this was pre-written Incredibles 2 theory that Jack Jack was supposed to be the yeah, villain? Yeah, there was a fan theory back when Incredibles 2 was like, oh, they're going to make one that's like, uh, what if Jack Jack would, would have been the villain the next one and it would take place decades later because he has all these powers he's basically a super weapon right you know because he doesn't have one he has yeah. like dozens upon dozens yeah. of powers he's like iron monster fire, fire yeah um, i saw a trailer for in the tra- or- laser beam eyes laser beam you know, eyes i saw a trailer he like teleportation uh, that not, not even teleportation like fucking d- transdimensional Fa- phasing phasing through yeah uh, yeah like going he's different, in different dimensions. dimensions and shit yeah. so yeah that that right there that's a valid theory mm-hmm. I, I, I read that and i was like that is very interesting. Be good one uh, plot for the third film. They would do that. There you go. And then it's Vietnam. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's so, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then we it lose somehow because we didn't <laughs> use superheroes or whatever. Anyway, Stuart's politics. Let's get out of <laughs> yeah, here. We... So thank you for liking. Thank you for commenting. Mm. Be sure to subscribe to Double Toasted. Hit it again. Hit, oh, hit that th- three. Subscribe. And then make sure you tell your friends so we can go to a billion. Get to a billion. We want a billion. Yeah, of course. So keep, number. keep subscribing. Get your, all your other fake accounts. Subscribe. Thank you. That's it. We're late. We're leaving. Yes. Say goodbye. Bye, everyone. Say goodbye to YouTube, everybody. Bye, YouTube. Bye, YouTube. We're fading. We're fading. It's gone. Merry Christmas, everyone.